Hello biology class, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson six as you can see, uh, titled respiratory rate or breathing rate. Um, we're gonna talk about that rate, um, how it fluctuates between children and adults. Uh, we're gonna talk about how our body determines what rate we should be breathing at and how that um, is kept at a balance. And then we're gonna talk about some things that um, can s slow down our breathing rate and make it dangerous for us. So let's get into it. The first slide is a video of a deep sea dive. It is a very um, interesting uh, video about a guy who is a competitive diver and tries to break the re his own record going down as far as he can each time. Uh, he needs to slow his breath down uh, a lot so that he can hold his breath longer and go deeper. It's very, very dangerous, um, but it is a sport. Oops, it is a sport that um, lots of people take part in. Uh, this guy is just one of the top at it in the world. So check out that video. The respiratory rate is the rate at which breathing occurs. So it's kind of self-explanatory. It's your breathing rate. It's measured uh, usually in breaths per minute. Um, and these rates can fluctuate from person to person depending on how fit they are, uh, if they are, uh, sick or not or if you've been uh, sleeping or if you have been exercising but generally the typical respiratory rate for a healthy adult is between 12 and 18 breaths per minute so um, you're taking you know five seconds of breath or four seconds of breath or so um, and uh, you know it's not very it's not very fast paced uh, it's at rest um, children breathe at a much higher rate. So um, babies from birth to six weeks breathe 30 to 40 breaths per minute and it can be quite shocking uh, for people to see their child breathing that fast because you're not used to it. So uh, that can cause a lot of distress for people. It slows down um, generally to 25 by six months uh, but can still be up to 40. And then at three years, it's between 20 and 30 breaths per minute and will eventually get slower and slower and slower until you're an adult at uh, 12 to 18. Now maybe this explains why toddlers are so energetic, they just breathe so much more air. Uh, but these are the general breathing rates for children. They're generally much, much higher than for adults at rest. So controlling ventilation. So ventilation is bringing air into our body. It is essentially a breath. So the control of ventilation refers to the physiological mechanisms involved in the control of breathing. So how does your body decide how fast to breathe? How does it decide if you should speed it up really fast so you can get more oxygen in, or if you should slow it down so you can conserve energy? Uh, how does it decide that? So breathing is normally an unconscious, involuntary, and automatic process. We don't have to think about breathing. We just do it. Obviously, you can think about breathing, but we generally don't. Uh, if we think about breathing, we can control the rate. We can breathe fast. We can breathe slow. But if we're just sitting there normally, how does it determine if it should be 12 or if it should be 18? Because this is an in unconscious and involuntary process that happens automatically. So the rate is controlled by how much carbon dioxide is in your blood. So that's why key point two is carbon dioxide here. Uh, if you have too much CO2 in your blood, that means that you are going to breathe faster to release it. Um, your body actually doesn't have a mechanism to determine how much oxygen is in your blood. Uh, we only have a mechanism to determine how much carbon dioxide is in our blood. And how much carbon dioxide is in our blood can, is a direct correlation to how much oxygen is in our blood. So if you have too much CO2, you're going to breathe faster and replace it with oxygen. So this would happen uh, when you work out or after you hold your breath. You can think about it as if you're working out or holding your breath, you are making more CO2 than your body would be able to expel if you breathe regularly. So after you're done working, uh, holding your breath or while you're working out, you need to pick up this pace of breathing to get rid of the CO2 at a regular pace. If you have CO2 in your blood, it is not good for you if you have too much. So you need to get rid of it. Uh, it is not about getting more oxygen into your body. That is just a consequence of what happens when we get rid of the CO2. 
If you have too little uh, carbon dioxide, it means you're going to breathe slower because you don't need to get rid of it. Having too little carbon dioxide is also a problem. So if you have too little carbon dioxide, you're going to breathe slower um, and you're not going to bring in as much, as much oxygen and it will balance out over time. So we don't have a sensor for oxygen. We have a sensor for CO2 and that controls how much, how fast we breathe. This is a really, really key point. Uh, as you move on in, in biology and learn more about the human body, you'll learn more exactly about how we measure that CO2 in our body. Uh, it is a really, really complicated process. Um, so uh, if, you're more, if you're interested, we can talk about it more. Uh, you can ask me, but uh, just know that CO2 is controlling how fast you breathe. And if you have too much, you breathe faster. If you have too little, you're going to breathe slower and then know that consequence for what it, what it means for oxygen, if you're bringing more or less oxygen into your body. The place that controls our breathing or controls our ventilation is the medulla, which is in our brain. So we have this picture here. We have the medulla right at the bottom of our brain stem. So these three things control the most basic processes of life, like your heart beating, and your lung and your and your breathing and your blood pressure and all that stuff so breathing is controlled by the medulla right here at the base of the brain stem so it is in your brain and it detects the level of co2 in your blood and controls how fast you are breathing so that is 100 percent controlling your breathing unless you're thinking about it that is then the cortex or the wrinkly part of your brain the medulla is part of the autonomous nervous system which works automatically, autonomous and automatic. So the medulla is automatic. It controls the automatic parts of your body that you don't need to think about, such as digestion. You don't need to think about extracting water from your pee before you get rid of it. Uh, this, All this type of stuff is controlled by the medulla, which is the autonomous nervous system or the automatic nervous system. One thing that can affect your medulla and affect your breathing rate is alcohol. So one effect of alcohol is to slow your breathing rate by suppressing your autonomic nervous system. So alcohol will suppress uh, all the regulatory functions that the nervous system does. Uh, it can affect your heart rate, it can affect your blood pressure, uh, and it can definitely affect your breathing. So when someone has alcohol poisoning, it means that they are not breathing fast enough to keep their oxygen levels up. So the alcohol will affect the medulla which will affect your breathing. And it is not a you, you you don't have too much, you don't have too little CO2 or too much oxygen in your body, but you are still breathing at a slower level. And what this means is that CO2 builds up and oxygen is depleted, but your brain isn't able to recognize that. Your medulla is not able to recognize that CO2 is building up and is not able to make you breathe faster. This can cause major problems. Uh, which will which would be like not getting enough oxygen to your brain or to your cells uh, and can cause brain damage or even death at a very serious level. So if someone is unconscious and cannot think about their breathing, this is when it becomes really, really, really dangerous. So if someone is awake, they can think about their breathing, they can uh, consciously breathe and it is not as much an issue. But if someone is unconscious, they are not able to think about that breathing and alcohol can have a the effect on the medulla, suppressing their um, breathing rate to such a low level um, that damage can be caused. So very, very important information. This is the actual physiological mechanism by which um, uh, alcohol has these effects on your body, these damaging effects. So if this happens to you or someone you know, um, you know, get to the hospital, uh, now you're more aware of the situation. What I'd like you to do is complete the breathing rate lab. It is similar in sense to the um, heart rate lab that you did in the last unit. Uh, you might need someone to watch the clock for you while you do your measurements. And then there's a bunch of questions for you to ask, uh, ask, answer. So if you have any questions for me to ask, I would be happy to answer those. Um, and if you wanna talk more about how CO2 regulates your breathing, uh, let me know as well. But thanks very much for watching everyone and I will see you soon.